Hi folks, it's Peter Lemieux from Rounding Third. I tell baseball stories, but not today. Today I'm going to give you a personal story and then ask you to participate at the end. And the name of this is Baseball Names. It all starts when I was a young lad. If any of you guys ever watched the movie Sandlot, that's kind of how I lived my youth. Anywhere we could find a baseball game, my ragtag kids would get together and we'd try to play. We played with baseballs, tennis balls, softballs, wiffle balls. We even used wiffle golf balls. I mean, if, if we could play some ball, we would play it. If, if, if we didn't have enough kids for a game, we would use ground rules where we just say if the ball goes so far, it's a single or a double or an out. And we'd figure out how to play a game even if there are just two of us. At that time, my best friend was a guy named Denny Mayfield. Denny moved from the Pittsburgh area to where I lived in northern New York and brought with him a great love for all things Pittsburgh. That meant the Pittsburgh Pirates. So as we grew up, we would have our little kid debates about Roberto Clemente versus Willie Mays, and we'd go back and forth. It was great fun. High school came and we graduated. Denny went this way. I went that way. And we caught up infrequently at best. There were periods of time where many years would go by and I wouldn't hear from him. Then one day, I got a package from somebody named Dennis Mayfield. It seems that there was a transition in Denny's life. He had become Dennis. And in it was a baseball card. In plastic, really nice. A guy named Horace Speed of the Indians. And I said to myself, well, who's Horace Speed? And why are you sending this to me? And I found a one sentence note. Every team needs some speed. Well, that's interesting. Well, I checked it out. And Horace had only played one season in the majors. I went into the all manic and found out that Horace eventually played three years. And I said, I just wonder how fast this guy was. Stole four bases in three years. It was great laugh. Had a great time. And periodically, I would get these packages from Dennis, and it would be similar. They were chosen by the name of the player. I'll share one more because it's my favorite. He sent me this guy, skinny guy pitching for the Red Sox, named Win Remishwald. And the note was, every pitcher should win. So I checked out Win. He actually pitched for the Red Sox in a small part of two years, retiring with a total of three wins. Again, great laugh, great name. So it was just a little while ago I started thinking about I wonder if there's a story in baseball names, some of the best names I could find in baseball. So I'm going to share a few with you. At the end of this show, I'm going to ask you guys to send me some other ones, because I'm sure you know way more than I do. But let me tell you what I came up with. Um, the first guy I came up with is Milton Bradley. Milton Bradley, of course, for those of us who grew up playing board games, just had tons of board games that we all played growing up. Well, it seems Milton Bradley was a baseball player and a baseball player worthy of his own show on Rounding Third. So look forward to that one. Then there was an old timer played for the Yankees named Urban Shocker. If you just saw the words urban shocker, you would think this is some disaster news about something horrible happening in a big city. But not when he was pitching, everybody knew urban shocker. Oh, how about this guy? Vic Power. Every team needs some power. That's what Dennis would say. Vic Power was a pretty good hitter. He played 11 years, retired with a 286 average. The problem is, he didn't hit all that many home runs. The most he ever hit in a year was 19. But he brought the team 
Power, Vic Power. Now, this next one I'm not going to tell you about. I'm just going to mention the name and let it be, okay? This is a family show. There's a guy who played Major League Baseball with the name of Charlie Manlove. Next name. It's hard to think about baseball without thinking about having a cold beer during the baseball game. So I got three guys for you. There is actually a baseball baseball player with the name of Seth Beer. Well, that's cool. But did you know there's a guy whose last name was Weiser? And his nickname, of course, was Bud. He's in the almanac, Bud Weiser. Those two would go along with this player. The guy's name was Pretzel Pazulo. So I got a couple of beers and pretzels. We could call this the all snack team. Let me bring up a couple others you may know of. And just to tell you where I'm going with this. The Red Sox had a pitcher named Oil Can Boyd. Um, I, I try to figure out how he got this name Oil Can. And it seems like in his hometown of Meridian, Mississippi, where he lived, they called beers oil. So if you had an oil can, you had a can of beer. And I guess Oil Can enjoyed his beers. So he got the nickname Oil Can Boyd for his beer drinking. Oh, some great ones. How about the wonderful, magnificent hitter for the Chicago White Sox, Frank Thomas. But in Chicago, Frank Thomas is the big hurt. What a great name. Then we have another one out in San Francisco. Um, Pablo Sandoval was called the Kung Fu Panda. So Pablo carried a little extra weight and he loved to eat. So when you see pandas, what a great image. They're just sitting there munching on some bamboo shoots and they're a little chubby. Great nickname for Pablo. In the all-black leagues, before they were allowed to play in the majors, there was a great player who's named Turkey Stearns. Turkey. And I found out that the reason he got the name Turkey is when he ran, he flapped his arms. And all the players got a big kick out of it. And they said he ran like a turkey. But he is known in baseball history as Turkey Stearns. A lot of you are going to know this one because it's kind of current. The great Hall of Fame reliever for the Yankees, Mariano Rivera. He was called the Sandman. Isn't that a great, great name? He comes in the game and you can go to bed because he's putting everyone down for bedtime. The game is over. And he just went by the name Sandman. Of course, not to be denied, the Mets got a couple of guys we should mention. They had a pitcher in 2013. He was a really great pitcher for them by the name of Matt Harvey. And then suddenly he became the Dark Knight of Gotham City. Now, Matt Harvey only had a couple of good years. How did he get to be the Dark Knight of Gotham City? Batman, obviously, was the popular movie of the days. And everyone, a lot of people called New York Gotham. One day, Matt Harvey pitched very close to a perfect game. He didn't get it, but he was he was unhittable. And Sports Illustrated ran an article about this young pitcher who almost got a perfect game. And it was Sports Illustrated that gave him the name. Matt Harvey is truly the Dark Knight of Gotham City. Compliments of the uh, Sports Illustrated. Another one the Mets came up with was for Noah Syndergaard. Noah Syndergaard went by the nickname Thor because he looked like a Marvel um, hero, superhero, Marvel superhero. Oh, I love this one. Great hitter, Hall of Fame, uh, played for Tampa and some other teams. Fred McGriff. Fred McGriff was called the crime dog. What's this got to do? Well, you had to be there to find out. There was a TV ad that was running all the time trying to stop crime in people's neighborhoods. 
And there was a cartoon dog who called himself McGruff, take a bite out of crime. And everybody knew McGruff take bite out, bite out of crime. So when the announcers came to Fred McGriff, they didn't think it'd be proper to call him McGruff. So they would call him the crime dog. And it stuck. How about Shoeless Joe Jackson? You know, Shoeless Joe Jackson never played a day in the majors shoeless. How he got the name is in the minors, he made a bet that he could play a whole game without shoes on. And for one game, he did. They named him Shoeless Joe, and it stuck with him, not just in baseball, but for the rest of his life. When he was running his um, businesses, uh, laundromats or something like that, he was still called Shoeless Joe. Another one that's a nickname, a lot of people don't know it, is Satchel Page. His name is not Satchel. But when he was a young man, he would make money carrying people's baggage from the trains to wherever they were going to go, carriages or whatever they're getting. And he figured out that if he had a long pole, he could put more bags on it and make more money. Only at that time, the bags were called satchels. And because Satchel made more money with his pole, all the people in the neighborhood called him Satchel. And that was his name for the rest of his life. In the Red Sox, the beloved player, Big Poppy, David Ortiz. I'm not actually sure if there's a story for how he got Big Poppy, but to me, he is Big Poppy. Smiling, big guy, and you could rest easy because he was in the lineup today and the Red Sox had a great chance because Big Poppy could make it happen, and it did. Big Poppy is a hero in the city of Boston for his playoff and World Series heroics and just all around great guy. Did you ever wonder how Babe Ruth got the name Babe? It's not his name, George Herman Ruth. And what I can find out is Babe Ruth was raised in an orphanage. And when he was a youngster, the people in the orphanage thought he was really, really cute kid. And they called him Babe in the Woods when he was an infant. And as he grew up, they always thought he was cute, so they just kept the name Babe. Of course, growing up with that name, he kept it for himself. And as he left the orphanage, became an adult, became a ball player, he wanted to be known as Babe Ruth, not George Ruth. Now, the last few I'm going to mention, I'm mentioning them because I couldn't believe these names ever existed. But they're in the baseball almanac. And I don't know much about these guys. I just picked this out like my friend Dennis because of their names. There's a guy in the almanac named King Lear. <laughs> Chief Bender. There's a guy named Boof. B-O-O-F. Boof Bonzer. Now, see, these are more current guys, so you may have heard of them. Razor Shines. And Coco Crisp. If you ask anybody on the street, what's Coco Crisp? They will undoubtedly tell you a breakfast cereal. But he's a baseball player. Um, I found a player whose first name was Phenomenal. Phenomenal Smith. So those of you who are expecting a baby and you're looking for baby names, consider Phenomenal. Phenomenal Smith. Now, this is my last one. I, again, I can't believe this is the guy's name or nickname or whatever. You all know World War I, the leader of Germany, very hated person. It wasn't Hitler. It, World War I, it was Kaiser Wilhelm. And he, we fought a war against this guy. Believe it or not, there's a guy in the baseball almanac with the name of Kaiser Wilhelm. So... Just a few little names that made you, made you laugh or be surprised. Now, my challenge. You folks are very, very 
good at your baseball knowledge. And I'm betting you can come up with names for me. So I'll look forward to comments of names. But let here's the rules. They have to be baseball names. Okay, don't give me names of wrestlers or football players. Just baseball, okay? They cannot be inappropriate names. This is a family podcast. My little grandchildren watch it. So let's keep them appropriate. Baseball names. But I know you folks have some in mind. If you can come up with five names, we're going to send you a batter sports hat. Folks, this is a one-time offer. I'm probably going to get fired for making the offer, but five names, then we'll get a hold of you. You have to give us a way to get a hold of you, and then we will get it out to you, okay? Um, Everybody needs a batter sports hat in their collection. Finally, Thank you very much for joining me in this kind of goofy, fun little discussion. And especially I want to say a hello to my friend, Dennis Mayfield. Dennis, I love you. Everybody have a great day.